tonight, an alert from local health officials here where a rabid bat was found inside a home, the first confirmed case in about six years. Plus, taking a live look outside, we're seeing some breezy conditions. Those are bringing in more changes. Meteorologist Hayden Nix is tracking a big dip in temperatures in your first alert forecast. And the Pasco School District holding a special event today in recognition of a new law named in honor of a local school bus driver who was killed on his route nearly three years ago. This is Apple Valley News Now at 5 on your side. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Alyssa Warner. We begin with new developments of the large warehouse fire in Finley. It's been burning now for weeks and today Benton County Commissioners visited the site for the first time. Our Austin Reed is there live out in Finley this evening. Austin, fire crews have said they'll be on standby tonight instead of just a security team. Why is that? Yeah, Alyssa, good afternoon. So we have been out here throughout much of the day, but right now is the most flames that we have seen. You know, a security team has been out here on site 24 hours a day, seven days a week since April 21st. That's when the fire broke out. But tonight, because of the winds, I mean, look at this paper. It's just it's going all over the place and the direction that the winds are moving right now it is a concern for firefighters so they will actually be here tonight let me step out of the way show you what's happening live right now this is a benton county fire crew along with water tender they are out here and they are trying to put those flames out here at lineage logistics like I said, they're going to be here the rest of tonight into the overnight hours and to tomorrow. Now, uh, late this afternoon, some Benton County commissioners actually toured the massive warehouse. They met with fire crews, answered questions, and brainstormed on what to do next. We know that demolition is now scheduled to begin on Tuesday of next week. They started preparing today, actually, and will continue into the weekend. Benton County Fire District 1 also says excavation crews arrived today. More water trucks are on the way as well. You, know, you can hear people talk about it, but until you see it in person, then you get a really good feel of what's going on. Hopefully, we're bringing more resources to the table that, that, that maybe we can help in other ways. I know the fire district has a limited budget. You know, and, and sometimes we can access emergency funds, the county can, but, you know, to bring in a helicopter and stand the fire district look into it, it's a million dollars, right? Because you have to have a qualified pilot uh, that can fly in a residential, this is considered a residential area, with a water bucket, right? Then you got to get special permits because it's not truly an emergency anymore. And earlier this morning, Benton County Fire's chief also met with the Benton Clean Air Agency along with the Benton Franklin Health Department. All right, let's come back out here live in Finley as my photographer Lucy is zoomed in on this area where the flames have reignited. Crews also tell me this is now considered the largest fire the Tri-Cities area has seen since the 1940s. As for the air quality, Experts say if you live in this area, you got to just keep those doors and windows shut as much as possible. The other issue that fire crews are dealing with is the dry fuels. There's a lot of peas and carrots and corn that are now burning. That's the latest. We'll come back here at 6 and have another update. For now, we're live in Finley, Austin Reed, Apple Valley News Now. Alyssa. Thanks, Austin. We'll check in with you in a bit. Now, this morning, firefighters were called out to a situation in Kennewick that shut down South Ely Street near the Kennewick Irrigation District building. Kennewick police say crews were able to get the fire in the middle of the street out. They were able to get everything cleaned up, so the road was reopened within a few hours. Not clear yet what caused that fire this morning, but let's talk about your weather. Austin mentioned the wind out there in Finley and meteorologist Hayden Nix joins us now with a look at this evening. Hi Hayden. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody else, the wind definitely picked up today. We're looking at sustained winds this afternoon. Yeah, clocking in in the 25 to 35 mile per hour range, and that's why a wind advisory was issued earlier today. It was set to expire at 11 p.m., but the National Weather Service within the last hour has now extended that until 5 p.m. Friday for all the areas that you see highlighted there for gusts up to 50 miles per hour. And the Tri-Cities area is still not under that wind advisory, but gusts up to 30 miles per 35 
25 miles per hour rather, not out of the question for the next 24 hours. So just a reminder, wind safety tips here, make sure to keep two hands on the steering wheel as those gusts could kind of cause your vehicle to uh, swerve on the road, watch tree branches and trash in the road, secure outdoor furniture, and please avoid any outdoor burning. We do not need any more fires out there. Temperatures are holding really warm. Tri-Cities was at 89 degrees earlier, but we're going to be cooling down to 48 tonight and cool weather coming this weekend. We're also going to be tacking on a chance for some showers next week. We're going to talk more about all of this coming up. Thanks, Hayden. And new tonight, the Benton Franklin Health District has confirmed that a bat found in a Prosser home had rabies. So the health district says anytime a bat shows up indoors, they do have to test it for this virus. In this case, they're working with the person who lives at the home to make sure that they're taking protective measures. Some of the ordinary steps you can take include getting your pets vaccinated and keeping a respectful distance from bats, whether they're living or dead, especially if they're on the ground or if you see them out during the daytime. The health district says the last rabies positive bat found in Benton County was six years ago. It's official. The Justice Department today moved to reclassify marijuana, moving it to a less dangerous category. If that goes through, this would be the DEA's biggest policy change in over half a century. It's something that President Biden asked them to look at a couple of years ago. Right now, federal officials have marijuana grouped in with things like heroin and LSD. The Justice Department is proposing lowering that and moving marijuana to Schedule 3 alongside things like ketamine and anabolic steroids. Now, that's not legalization, but it would mean a couple of significant changes. First of all, it would open up more research opportunities. Second, it would mean potential tax breaks that cannabis-related businesses do not qualify for right now. And it could make it a lot easier for traditional banks to work with those businesses. Third, it could mean that pharmacies might be able to dispense medical marijuana just like they do other prescription medications. Now, the next step in this process is a 60-day public comment period. That proposal also might have to be reviewed by a judge. We'll keep you posted. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump have agreed to two one-on-one -on -one debates ahead of the November election. Neither of these will be traditional presidential debates, though. One of them is happening before the party's conventions. ABC's Christiane Cordero has the details from D.C. In a far from typical campaign season, President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will square off in far from typical fashion. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. The first debate will happen June 27th on CNN. The second, September 10th, here on ABC News. Both campaigns chose to go around the nonpartisan commission on presidential debates, the traditional organizer since 1988, instead choosing to go face to face in studio. Trump has taunted Biden for weeks. We have an empty podium right here to my right. You know what that is? That's for Joe Biden. I'm trying to get him to debate. His message throughout the campaign season, anytime, any place. Biden took on the challenge with his surprise announcement, even mocking Trump's criminal trial in New York, referencing the one day a week he's not in court. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Trump accepted by writing, let's get ready to rumble. The debates typically happen over several dates in October. This year's dates mean the first debate will happen before either candidate is technically their party's nominee. It's really because the Biden campaign wants them early. Um, it's a fact that people are voting earlier than ever. Early voting is now so prevalent, almost half the country is voting before Election Day. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris agreed to a VP debate that'll air on CBS in either July or August. Trump has not yet announced his VP running mate. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Well, this morning, the Pasco School District held an event to celebrate the Richard Lenhart Act. This is a new state law named in honor of a Pasco school bus driver who was killed by a trespasser on his bus when he was driving elementary school aged children home. His widow has been working with school officials and state lawmakers to make sure that doesn't happen again. This morning, she thanked her family and the bus driver community in a heartfelt speech. And my family. I thank you for the support that you give me every day. You give me strength to do this. And all of you bus drivers, when I see you, you always give me hugs and give me your support. And you have no idea how much that means to me. It gives me strength. Now, this law is set to be in effect in Washington by July of 2025. As of right now, only nine out of the 50 states have laws making it a crime to trespass on a public school bus. We'll find out later tonight how Mrs. Lenhart is planning to help change that.
Seniors across the Yakima Valley came to the Harmon Center today for the Active Aging Resource Fair. That featured more than a dozen organizations providing services to seniors. Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell spoke with Harmon Center officials who say many seniors aren't aware of the resources offered within the community. The Harmon Center itself offers resources, activities, and assistance for seniors, but arguably its most used service is being a hub for information. Staff tell me the top three problems seniors come to them with are senior scams, technology issues, and legal advice. To help, they have regular presentations on senior scams and how to deal with them when they come up. They also have a free computer lab open Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. But when it comes to legal advice and other things not specifically offered at the Harmon Center, they do their best to connect seniors with organizations that can help. We always direct them to the Northwest Justice Project. They're a great organization that either helps seniors at low cost or no cost, and they can get the legal help that they need. Coming up at 6, we'll take a deep dive into one of those resources specifically for families and their loved ones dealing with dementia. Reporting from the Acoma Newsroom, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. Thanks, Emily. While well, we're talking about some breezy weather, that's bringing a big change in the forecast as we head towards the weekend. Meteorologist Hayden Nix is tracking that in your first alert forecast. And new developments tonight, the federal government suspending funding to a virus research group that's linked to bat research in China. That's next on Apple Valley News Now. The Memorial Day sale starts this weekend at Moore Furniture. And you can save big with store-wide sale prices and free white glove delivery. Get your home summer ready with the in-stock looks you love and an incredible selection on all furniture, mattresses, and accessories. Why buy online when you can get real furniture at a real value? Visit your local More Furniture now. It's Ford SUV season. Time to get out there and take on adventure in a whole new way. Start with great offers on Ford Escape, Explorer, Mustang Mach-E, and Expedition. And experience Ford Blue Cruise hands-free highway driving. Available on select vehicles. It's Ford SUV season. Let's get going. Get 0% APR for 72 months and 3,000 flex by cash on an Escape or up to 3,000 cash on a Mustang Mach-E. Only at your local Ford dealer. The race continues for over $13,000 in cash and prizes with Wild Horse Resort and Casino's $125,000 Derby Dash for cash and prizes. Play all week to earn entries, then multiply them on Thursdays. Drawings every Friday and Saturday. Pick your lucky horse and ride away with up to $700 cash. Then join us on Saturday, May 25th for the $15,000 Grand Prize. Three winners will race toward the finish line, and the winner takes home $10,000 cash. Wild Horse Resort and Casino. More winners, more often. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find a Kubota dealer near you at gokubota.com. <laughs> Our new orthopedic regenerative medicine clinic with Prosser Memorial Health orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Jeffrey B. Higgs, is now offering a variety of treatments, including platelet-rich plasma injections to enhance injury recovery, promote healing, and treat pain associated with early osteoarthritis. To schedule an appointment, call Prosser Orthopedic Center at 509-786-5599 or learn more at prosserhealth.org. This is how we care. Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever Battle New York. Watch Saturday morning at 930 on Apple Valley News Now. New tonight, the Biden administration has suspended funding for a nonprofit group called EcoHealth that was working with scientists in China to study bat coronaviruses when COVID-19 started spreading. Investigators have so far not been able to determine for sure where COVID-19 came from. But the Department of Health and Human Services says EcoHealth failed to adequately monitor virus growth in experiments at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. HHS also proposed that the group be blocked from federal funds in the future, maybe for years. EcoHealth says it's going to fight to get that federal funding back.
Now, this comes as scientists are carefully monitoring a new group of COVID-19 mutations with concerns that we could see a summer surge. So you could think of this as part of a family of COVID variants that researchers have nicknamed FLIRT. The form formal name is KP.2. It's now the dominant version of COVID-19 in the United States. So why is that a concern? There's some suggestion that it might be more easily transmissible. It does not, however, seem to be causing more severe disease. Researchers are still working to determine how well the vaccine protects against this new version of COVID, but experts at Johns Hopkins say antiviral medications do still seem to be working if you get sick. Now, the CDC doesn't have specific COVID-19 isolation guidelines anymore, but they do say anytime you get sick, especially if you have a fever, you should stay home until 24 hours after you start feeling better and take extra precautions like masking or social distancing for an additional five days after that. We are just over a week from the start of summer travel season and the TSA is expecting air travel to set new records this year. The head of the TSA says so far they've seen almost 10% more people go through security this year compared to last year. And they're bracing to see more than 3 million travelers per day during the peak of summer. From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Hayden Nix. Well, for this Thursday, we've had two things in the forecast, warm temperatures and very windy conditions, and we're seeing both of that taking shape right now with a live look out at the D Dust Devils practicing as they head to their next game against the Hillsboro Hops tonight starting at 630, 89 degrees currently. That's very warm out there compared to what was forecast for today, and the wind does have a lot to do with it. 86 at first pitch, 80 by 730, 74 by 830 with windy conditions southwest 15 to 25 for the stadium there. So just be advised, make sure that you're preparing for that wind. 89 degrees in the Tri-Cities area, 83 in Hermiston, not near as warm in our surrounding locations, 78 in Hanford, 82 in Prosser, 76 in Yakima to 69 in Ellensburg, 81 in Walla Walla. So the ridge of high pressure that was giving us the warm weather, it is slowly drifting south and breaking down. But Right now, as we're transitioning away from that ridge, we are seeing a change in our wind pattern aloft, and it actually has a pretty tight pressure gradient. The tighter the pressure gradient, that means these wind speeds are picking up, and that has definitely verified today. Take a look at your sustained wind speeds. These are not wind gusts. We're seeing the sustained winds anywhere between 25 and 35 miles per hour. And this is why a wind advisory has been in effect for much of today. But we just got an extension from the National Weather Service going into tomorrow. But you can see wind gusts even being reported upwards of near 50 miles per hour in some locations. So that's why this is going to remain in effect until 5 o'clock tomorrow because we do expect that pressure gradient to remain fairly tight. That means the winds will remain strong. And the areas highlighted in blue, including Yak portions of Yakima County and uh, Kittitas County there, we are looking at gust up to 50 miles per hour down in Oregon near Hermiston and Pendleton gust up to 50 miles per hour will be possible there just west of the Blues but Tri-Cities up to 35 miles per hour so let's take a look at future cast wind gusts it will try to ease up a little bit tonight but look what happens as we move into Friday those wind gusts will pick back up maybe not quite as intense but we could see that threshold up towards 50 miles per hour that's why those wind advisories will remain in effect and then by seven o'clock tomorrow evening we should begin to see the setting of the uh, weakening of those winds as we have that ridge of high pressure finally departing out of the way and then we're going to see uh, upper level low moving in and this is going to be the first of multiple coming in over the weekend and into next week to help encourage some rain potential and the consistency of cooler temperatures. So future cast tonight shows that we will see some rain chances. Of course, just limited to the higher terrain of the Cascades there, keeping it dry down in the valleys, but we could see a little bit of precip popping back up in the blues early tomorrow morning, and then we'll see a mixture of some cloud cover and then another chance for some showers back in the Cascades on Saturday afternoon. 
going into the evening hours, but there will be an opportunity for other locations to see some rain. You'll see that in the seven day forecast in just a minute. Tonight, those temperatures will be dropping down into the 40s, maybe even some upper 30s out there. Then for your Friday, it will be in the upper 60s to mid 70s for your range there. We'll have those rain chances coming in Tuesday and Wednesday, thanks to our consistent upper level disturbance pattern that we'll have. And there'll be an opportunity for maybe a few hundreds of inches of rain down in the valleys. Thanks, Hayden. Well, it is National Barbecue Day, but with that wind, please be careful if you decide to celebrate. We are talking fire safety as we get into the summer months coming up on Apple Valley News Now at 5. The Golf Forecast, sponsored by the Wild Horse Ladies Golf Classic, August 12th through the 18th. A semi-truck accident can shatter your life. At Tamaki Law, we put your life back together. If you've been hit by a semi-truck, call Tamaki Law. We understand the complex rules and regulations of the trucking industry. Dealing with big rig insurance companies requires a knowledgeable legal team, one who fights for compensation and justice that you deserve. If you've been seriously injured, call Tamaki Law and get your life back. My Curly Certified Pre-Owned means that your vehicle meets a higher standard because that's, it's, it's the right thing to do. I mean, yeah, it's the right thing to do. The vehicle we sell is a representation of us. And if we don't do everything we can to make sure it's a great product at a great value, then we don't want you driving the car. You know, we can't make a pre-owned car brand new, but we do everything we can to make that vehicle right to be able to be sold to this community. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing brace with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. When it comes to your business, off is not an option. Off means time and money lost. To move forward and grow, you need to be on, on time, on budget, so you can come out on top. Batteries Plus has the national scale to fulfill all your battery and power needs and a dedicated expert for the local support you want. Power on with Batteries Plus Business. Visit one of our 700 plus stores today. Checking. Open yours today at any Yakima Federal Savings and Loan. Dishwasher on the fritz. Laundry. Giving you fits. A water heater that quits. In a world without Culligan, hard water makes life harder. Get a Culligan softer. The world's best. Put your water worries to rest. Welcome back. It is National Barbecue Day, and with summer right around the corner, temperatures warming back up, it's really important to stay safe while you're barbecuing. Experts say only use the grill outside, place it away from your home, make sure it's located on a flat level surface, and always clean it after use. We met with a local insurance agent from Kennewick earlier today who said whether you're renting or you own, having insurance is key. I, so I've been doing this for 17 years, and one right off the top of the head, you know, is someone was in the backyard. They had uh, just basically a fire pit going, uh, pretty easy going, you know, had some, some neighbors over and uh, the fire got out of control. And uh, these were people that were, you know, had bonfires and fires quite frequently. So it wouldn't be something that was normal, but when caught the fire and ended up uh, not burning down their house, but actually burning down uh, their neighbor's house. So um, their homeowner's insurance actually paid for the other person's house. Now, the insurance advisor says renters can purchase plans for less than $20 a month, and it can be just a bit more for people that own their home. Some of the smoke from Canadian wildfires that moved into the Midwest this week has now lightened. So far, it's been staying away from us here in the Pacific Northwest. The Canadian Interagency Fire Center says around 130 wildfires are burning in Canada, dozens of which are considered out of control. 
A change in the weather could give firefighters a boost, but experts say scenes like this could very well be the new normal. The days of long summers with hot temperatures and no smoke, um, those may not be very common anymore. Now, one of these fires is burning in the same part of Alberta that was devastated by wildfire in 2016. That fire was the most expensive natural disaster in Canadian history. Now, here in the Tri-Cities region, we're keeping a close eye on the warehouse fire that is still burning weeks after it began. We're going to check in live with Austin and hear from one of the Benton County Commissioners who toured that site today, coming up on Apple Valley News Now at 6. But first, we've got one final check on your forecast when we come right back. Smoke City for Less. We are open seven days a week with now five locations. Stan's gonna ride the Nebula Drop Tower. Finally! I'm ready to ascend to the clouds to go where no dino has gone before. Goodbye, Earth. Hi, Alice! Whoa! He doesn't know it comes back down? Apparently not. I'll let you know when I hit orbit! Drop Tower, I get it. Triple Play has fun attractions for everyone, including go-karts, mini golf, and many more, all attached to a cozy hotel. You thought it would bust through the ceiling? You came through a portal from another dimension. Weird stuff happens. Why do you Goodwill? Well, there are countless reasons. Goodwill makes it easy to support my ongoing creative projects at home with their affordable items. To be environmentally friendly through upcycling, reusing, and recycling for the chance to uncover brand new items at unbelievable prices. Goodwill means being economical with my money. With hundreds of reasons to shop at Goodwill, you can feel great about knowing 95.7 cents of every dollar you spend helps your community. Goodwill. Donate. Shop. Impact locally. Tonight, Donald Trump's criminal trial. Stormy Daniels is back on the stand. Plus, the destruction as severe weather tears through even more states. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. Walla Walla Regional Airport, the gateway to your next vacation. As spring and summer travels approach, plan your flights through Walla Walla Airport. We offer free parking, and we have two Alaska flights to Seattle daily, making your travel easy and convenient. Take the time off, explore the world, and create memories that will last a lifetime. Walla Walla Airport, your connection to your next vacation. Book today. AlaskaAir.com, your destination awaits. You work hard for your money, and now you can get money back on state taxes you already paid with the Washington State Working Families Tax Credit. Visit workingfamiliescredit.wa.gov. Make your first move with battery power made by steel. Right now, save $50 on select steel battery trimmers. Real steel. Find yours. Busy work week or feeling under the weather, Prosser Memorial Health's Prosser Clinic, located on Chardonnay Avenue, is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Your health can't wait. Prosser Memorial Health's Prosser Clinic is open on weekends. Walk-ins are welcome. Or call 509-786-1576 to make an appointment. This is how we care. Welcome back. We're taking a final look at your forecast with meteorologist Hayden Nix. Well, let's talk about that. Temperatures are going to get chilly once more tonight with those readings back down into the 40s, and we could even see some locations towards the higher elevations west of Ellensburg and Yakima into the 30s. And then for tomorrow, hmm, you can say goodbye to those 80s. If you have been enjoying them, enjoy it now because we're going back into now average to below average temperatures over the next several days here with those 60s and 70s tomorrow, but we'll be more in that flavor of the temperature range for the next several days. Breezy can conditions will remain in play for Friday and even going into Saturday a little bit there. But really the bigger story as we get out of the weekend will be increasing cloud cover and a chance for some showers outside of the Cascades and the Blues in the valleys. It's possible 
Precip amounts look to be very light, but we'll be watching that closely as we get closer to time. A disturbance currently positioned just west of Alaska will be coming down and helping encourage a little bit more moisture support to go above and beyond the Cascades and head down into the valleys. Uh, that will be for Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, and then we'll likely see high temperatures only in the upper 60s to lower 70s. Melissa? Thanks, Hayden. We'll check this out. The U.S. Postal Service is honoring Ansel Adams by turning some of his most famous work into stamps. The Postal Service held a day of issue ceremony this week. World News Tonight with David Muir is next. We're back tonight at 6.